I gently open the door. What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel and we are now on episode 5 of Doki Doki Literature Club. Now last episode we had a very interesting one-on-one -on -one time with Yuri and we were able to confess our love to Siori in which we learned that she has had severe depression throughout her childhood. Let's get back into it. So apparently Siori isn't answering her phone and again I'm walking to school on the day of the festival. I considered going to her house to wake her up but decided that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. The banner Yuri and I painted is dry, and I gently rolled it up to take with me. She sent me a pleasant text reminding me not to forget anything, and I reassured her. Funny enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Sayori and Yuri at the festival. But knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. Also, I need to figure out what Monica told Sayori that day. Caleb Chan, I can't hear any audio. Caleb Chan, you're the first one here. Thanks for being early. That's funny. I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. Monica is placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. They must be the ones she prepared to have all the poems were performing. Monica, I need to know what you said to Sayori. I do not trust you not one bit right now. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. So that's the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised you didn't bring Sayori with you. Yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. You'd think that on days like this, she tried, she try a little harder. But I want to see her reaction to this. I say that, but I suddenly remember what Siori told me yesterday, and I suddenly feel awful knowing it's not nearly that simple for her. I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. But maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all. I think you really should have. Ah ha ha. You should take a little responsibility for her, Caleb Chan. I mean, especially after your exchange, after your exchange with her yesterday. How do you know? You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know. Exchange? Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. I'm the club president after all. Dog, the fact that it's quiet, there's no sound going on at all. But I stammer, I stammer embarrassed. Did Sayori really tell her about it that quickly? That we're a couple now? I didn't really plan on bringing it up with anyone yet. Jeez, you don't know the full story at all, so... Don't worry, I probably know a lot more than you think. Huh? Okay. This is starting to get a little interesting, bro. Monica's being as friendly as usual, but for some reason I felt a chill down my spine after hearing that. Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I grabbed one of the pamphlets laid out on the desk. Oh yeah, they really did. Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. I flipped through the pages. Each member's poem is ne neatly printed on its own page, giving it an almost professional feel. I recognized Natsuki's and Yuri's poems for the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? I flipped to Sayori's poem. It's different from the one she practiced. It's one that I haven't read before. Get out of my head before I do what I know is best for you. I listen to everything she said to me. I show you how much I love you. I finished writing this poem, but a poem is never actually finished. It just stops moving.
Ah, what is this? Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Caleb John, what's wrong? Uh, nothing. This poem feels completely different than everything else Sayori's written. But more than that, I, I changed my mind. I'm going to go get Sayori, so... Ah, well, all right. Try not to take too long, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. Well, stay, get back. Get away from me, bruh. Moni, Monica calls out after me. Go stay in the class. I quicken my pace. You ran all the way back home? What was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Sayori. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her or help her wake up. Even the simple gesture of walking her to school makes her really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that, that things will be the same as they always have been. That's all she needs, and that's what I want to give her. I reach Sayori's house and knock on the door. Dude, there's still no audio. I, ex I don't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I opened the door and let myself in. Sayori? She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house? That really is something that a boyfriend would do, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I mean, this is like your first day though. Like, I've been dating for less than 24 hours. In any case, it just feels right. Outside Sayori's room, I knock on her door. Sayori? Wake up, dummy. There's no response. I really didn't want to have to leave. What? I really didn't want to have to enter her room like this. Isn't it kind of a breach of privacy? But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. First of all, where are your parents at? Do you not have parents? I don't think I can even put this up on YouTube. Yo, I'm like actually sad. If I find out that Monica is responsible for this, but I just saw a picture of Yuri though too. It's either Yuri or Monica, bro. I think it's Monica. I can't even read this, bro. I told her I know what's best and that everything will be okay. Then why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Confessing to her? I shouldn't have confessed to her. That's not what Siori needed at all. She even told me how painful it is for others to care about her. Then why did I confess to her and make her feel even worse? So it's my fault? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault. My swarming thoughts kept telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. If I just spent more time with her, walk her to school and remain friends with her like it's always has been, and I could have prevented this. 
I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. I just lost my best friend. Someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. Nothing I can do to bring her back. This isn't some game where I can reset and try something to- <laughs> For me it is. And honestly, that's exactly what I'm going to have to do. I had only one chance, and I wasn't careful enough. And now I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. Yo, I promise you, I would have never been the same if this had happened to me. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers. But I still couldn't do what she needed from me. And now, I can never take it back. Never. 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 Yo. She replaced? What is this? I see an annoying girl running towards me from the distance, waving her arms in the air. So it's totally a. Is this the same from. This girl is. My neighbor, good friend. Okay. But she's going to chase me. What is this? The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. There really aren't any that interest me. Besides, most of them would probably be way too demanding for me to want to deal with. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Caleb Chan. Monica? Oh my goodness, I totally didn't expect to see you here. It's been a while, right? Ah, yeah, it has. Monica smells sweetly. We do know each other well. We rarely talked, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically completely out of my league. So having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... What did you come in here for? It. What did you come in here for anyway? Oh, I've just been looking for some supplies to use for my club. Do you know if there's any construction paper in here? Or markers? I guess you could check the closet. You're in the debate club, right? Aha, uh -huh, about that. I actually quit the debate club. Really? You quit? Yeah. To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. In that case, what club did you decide to join? Actually, I'm starting a new one. Oh. A literature club. Literature? That sounds kind of dull. How many members do you have so far? You have, you have three members. You have Natsuki. You have Yuri. You have Sayori too. Ahaha. 
But there's only three of us so far. Okay, is the three including you? It's really hard to find new members for something that sounds so boring. Well, I can see that. But it's really not boring at all, you know. Literature can be anything. Reading, writing, poetry. I mean, one of my members even keeps her manga collection in a club room. Okay, that's not so key. Wait, really? Yeah, it's funny, right? She always insists that manga is literature too. I mean, she's not wrong, I guess. And besides, a member... A member is a member, right? Did Monica say she... Hmm. Hey, Caleb John. By any chance, are you still looking for a club to join? Uh, I mean, I guess so, but in that case, is there any chance you should do me a big favor? I won't ask you to join, but if you could at least very least visit my club, it would make me really happy. Please? Um, well, I guess I have no reason to <laughs> refuse. Besides, how could I ever ref refuse someone like Monica? Sure, I guess I could check it out. Aw, awesome. You're really sweet, Caleb Chan, you know that? It's nothing, really. Shall we go, then? I'll look for the materials another time. You're more important. And thus today marks the day, okay, I sold my soul to Monica this time. Enter irresistible smile. I timidly follow Monica across the school and upstairs. A section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third year classes and activities. Monica, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. It wasn't Monica the first time, it was Sayori. I'm back, and I brought a guest with me. Eh? A guest? Seriously, you brought a boy? Please don't jump scare me. Way to kill the atmosphere. Don't be mean, Natsuki. But anyway, welcome to the club, Caleb Chan. All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. But let me guess, you're Monica's boyfriend. No. What? No, I'm not. Natsuki. That girl with the sour attitude whose name is apparently Natsuki is the one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. Anyway, this is Natsuki. Energetic as usual. This is Yuri, the vice president. It's nice to meet you. Hi, Yuri. It's nice to meet you too. Uh, okay. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with someone like Natsuki. Yeah, it's nice to meet both of you. So, I ran into Caleb Chan in the classroom and he decided to come check out the club. Yeah. Isn't that great? It's wonderful. Wait, Monica. Didn't I tell you to let me know in advance before you brought anyone new? I was going to, well, you know. Sorry, sorry. I didn't forget that, but I just happened to run into him. In that case, I could at least make some tea, right? Yeah, that would be great. Why don't you come sit down, Caleb John? The girls gave a few desk. The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. Yuri walks to the corner of the room and opens the closet. Meanwhile, Monica and Natsuki sit across from each other. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Monica. So I know you didn't really plan on coming here, but we'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. Yeah, I wonder why. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. 
not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile, but it makes school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, Natsuki? Well, I guess. Natsuki reluctantly agrees. Such different girls all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these two. Just these two, right? Only two? Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot in the middle. We keep a whole set of tea in this classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea enjoy a good book? Uh, I guess. Hehehe, he, he. don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Eh? That's not... Insulted, Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know. I believe you. Well, tea is reading. Tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. So, Caleb Chan, what kind of things do you like to read? Um, I don't really read. Considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga? I mutter quietly to myself, half joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not so much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in. But it's obvious by the way her eyes lit up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Yeah, I'm for sure thrown for a loop. We're reading a lot of horror lately. Ah, I read a horror book once. This really grasped something and really to a minimal level. Uh, uh huh, I expect that from you, Yuri. It suits you personally. Oh, is that so? Really? If a story makes me think or takes me to another world, put it down? The real horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world. If only for a brief moment. Ugh, I hate horror. Oh, why is that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over from you for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually like to read about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then, next time we meet, we'll... I'll share them with each other. That way everyone is even. Um, uh, I mean, I thought it was a good idea. Well, I think you're right, Monica. We should probably start finding activities for all of us to participate in together. I did decide to take on the responsibility of vice president after all. I need to do my best to nurture the club as well as its members. Besides, now that we have a new member, it seems like a good step for us to take. Do you agree as well, Caleb Chan? Hold on, there's still one problem. Eh? What's that? Now that we've reached the most imp 
important topic, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girl's eyes light up. Oh my goodness, really? Do you really mean that, Caleb Chan? Yeah. It could be fun, right? You really did scare me for a moment. I mean, if you really just left after all this, it'll be, I'll be super pissed. Caleb Chan, I'm so happy. We can become an official club now. Thank you so much for this, you're really amazing. I'll do everything I can give you a great time, okay? Aw, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment? Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. Caleb Chan, I look forward to seeing you how you express yourself. Hehe. <laughs> yeah. Can I really impress this, the, the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel my anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit chat as Yuri cleans up the tea set. I guess I'll be on my way then. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow then. I can't wait. With that, I depart the club room and make my way home. My whole way, the whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the three girls. Natsuki. Yuri. And of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright, I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. You have unlocked a special poem. Would you like to read it? Sure. Right, shout out to Belize. I was able to get the poem since, since I guess his work or his gameplay. A dream. I was staying over at my friend's place. They were four of us. So this is referencing from our first like four gameplays. I drifted off to sleep while everyone was talking and watching TV. In my dream, I was still at my friend's house. The only difference was that there were new is that there were nails sticking out of the walls everywhere, and there w was also someone I didn't recognize. The person I didn't recognize told a joke, and everyone laughed. I woke up to the sound of everyone laughing at something that happened on the TV, so the laughing was not part of the dream. It was a noise that woke me up. I wonder who that person was and how they knew to tell a joke at that moment. Hi again, Caleb Chan. Glad to see you didn't run away from us, ha ha ha. Nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but at least I kept my word. Uh. Oh, 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 okay. Thanks for keeping your promise, Caleb Chan. Hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on. Like he deserves any slack. You really had to be dragged here by Monica? I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Oh, you're- I can't- you're blocking some of it. I can't read that. Monica, you're blocking the chat. Okay. Manga is literature. Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. I'm sorry, Caleb Chan. We'll make sure you- to put your comfort first, okay? Yuri shoots Natsuki with a disappointed glance. Um, anyway, now that you're in the club and all, perhaps you might have interest in picking up a book to read. Well, I can't really say no either way. Like you said, I'm in this club now, so it only feels right for me to do something like that if you ask. W wait, I didn't mean it like that. You, you... If you don't really want to, then forget I said anything, I guess. Uh, no, it's not- it's not that- Yuri? 
I just want to try to be a part of this club. So even if I don't read often, I'd be happy to pick up a book if you wanted me to. Uh, are you sure? I just felt like, well, as vice president and all, that I should help you get started on something you might like. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so I, it should keep your attention even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. But this is, how is this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I would definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I'll look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica to kick off with some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Yuri's face is already buried in a book, but I can't but notice her intense expression like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around the closet. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a bit more, but at the same time, I would feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse at the cover of the book. It looks like the same book that she lent me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Ah, crap. I think she noticed me looking at her. She sneaks in her glance at me and her eyes meet for a split second. But that only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. Sorry, I was just spacing out. I muttered this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh, it's fine. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... That's the book that you gave me, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted to re-read some of it. Not any particular reason. Just curious how come to how come you two have copies of the same book. Ah, well, when I stopped at the bookstore yesterday... Ah, that's not what I meant. I mean, I just happened to buy two of them. Ah, I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decided to let that go. I will definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What's the story about anyways? Well, hmm. I'll look at the cover of the book. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ammonious look eye symbol on the front of the cover. Basically, it's about the religious camp that was turned into a human experiment prison. And the people trapped there have this trait that turns them into killing machines that lust for blood. But the facility gets even worse when they start selectively breeding people by cutting off their limbs and asphyxiating them to... Oh, that might be a little bit of a spoiler. You just ruined the whole book for me! But anyway, I'm really into it. The books, I mean. I'm not into the, about the limbs. Are you sure? Because the way how this story is going, I wouldn't be surprised at this point. It's kind of dark, isn't it? Yuri made it sound like it was going to be a nice story, but that dark turn came from nowhere. Ah. Are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Caleb Chan? No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy those kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri is in those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that kind of story. It's kind that changes you to look at life from a different perspective, when horrible things happen not just because someone wants to be evil, but because the world is full of horrible people and we're all worthless anyway. I realize that she is a lot more talkative in this version than the last. That... Yo, I did not see that, but I'm for sure gonna check that back in the editing software. I'm... I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know what I that I have this problem. When I let... Things like books and writing fill my thoughts. My whole body gets incredibly what? Once again, I'm about to check that. I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. 
but I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I'm talking too much. Yeah, she's talking a lot now. And she is dangerous too. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club, after all. That's... Well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? Y yes I mean, I don't have to, but... Uh, well, what are you saying? Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieved the book that I had put into my bag. Alright, it's fine if I stay here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Uh, yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Uh, alright. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand that what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulders as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting. But the feeling is, is, some, is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. Sorry, I was just bathing in what? Yo, I'm gonna have a field day re like looking over this. Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I I do. I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean, aha. Uh -huh. Here, this should work, right? I slid my desk until it's up against Yuri's, then hold my book more between the two of them. Ah, I I suppose to. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we each lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead of using my right hand to hold the book open, uh, I guess that kind of makes it difficult to turn the page. Here. Oh, so we get a Yuri P. We get. Okay. Now we're reading with Yuri. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and the forefinger. Please don't jump scare me at this angle. I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way I turn a page and Yuri slid, slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. But in holding it but in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face, and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? And to turn the page. Ah, oh, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face, and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah, that's okay. You're not as used to reading, right? I am scared out of my mind for a jump scare, bro. Being patient if, if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I can do, since you've been so patient with me. Y yeah Thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me, so I turn it by my own volitation. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. Right, why did you make me in charge of turning the page? Because if we're going to be reading in silence, I don't know when you, like, you're done. My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey Yuri, this might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. Hey? Eh? No, I don't relate to this character at all. Definitely not. Really? I was just thinking the way she second guesses things she says and all that. Ah, that's what I, that's that's what you were talking about. What are you talking about? How she be killing people? Sorry, I thought you meant something else about her. See, that's exactly what I just said. She be killing people in the book. Something else? N never mind. We didn't even get that far yet. So don't. So I don't know why that came into my head. Haha. <laughs> Yuri, are you feeling all right? Eh? 
Yuri's been a little fidgety ever since we started reading. You can rest if you're feeling sick or something. Your breathing is a little... My breathing? Yuri puts her hands on her chest as if to feel her heartbeat. I I didn't even notice. Yo, I'm I'm a, I'm low key a little spooked. I'm not gonna lie to you. Anyway, I'm fine. I just need some water. All right, don't push yourself. Yuri stands up and practically rushes out the classroom. What on earth was that about? Caleb John, did something happen just now? Eh, I have no idea. Yuri was acting a little strange, I guess. So you don't know anything. Sorry, I, I can't say I do. Are you worried about her? Oh no, not really. I was just making sure that she didn't do any, that you didn't do anything to her. No, no, nothing. Ah, uh, don't worry. I believe you, silly. Yuri doesn't. Yuri just does this sometimes, so it's nothing alarming. I, right, if you say so. Anyway, why don't we start with sharing our poems with each other? Eh? Shouldn't we wait for Yuri? Well, she might be a while, so I just figured we'd get started without her. Is that okay? Yeah, I was just asking. Stand. I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in my book, then slip it back into my bag. Who should I open my poem to first, Natsuki? I told Natsuki I was interested in her poem yesterday. It's probably only fair if I share mine with her first. It's crazy how there were only two options this time. Well, it's about what I expected from someone like you. That's crazy. Even in this version, she's still a S tier hater. Some things just never change. Well, excuse me. It's not like I said it was bad. I just didn't evoke any emotions. So basically, it's not cute enough for your taste. Did you want to get? Do you want to get smacked? Man, I wish. Well, anyway, I just need to show you mine. Not that you'll like it. Man, it's the same bullshit as poem, bruh. Booty, bruh. Your poem's booty. I don't like it. Alright. Last but not least. Having a good time so far? Yeah, I'm having a great time. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever had any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course, I'd be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, I want to show you a poem with me. It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. Haha, don't worry, Caleb John. We're all a little embarrassed today. You know? But it's that sort of barrier that we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Hmm. Great job, Caleb John. I was going... Ooh, in my head when while reading it. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I understand you. It's easier for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way, I can always... It always counts when I put in some stuff. Uh huh. that's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. Wait, you know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writes that's full of imaginary and symbolism? Sometimes I feel like Yuri's mind is just totally detached from reality. It doesn't mean that it's a bad thing, though. But sometimes I get the impression that she just totally given up on people. She spends so much time on her own head that it doesn't... That's probably a much more interesting place for her. But that's why she's so happy when you and treat her with a lot of kindness. I don't think she used to being in Dodge like that. She must really starve for a social interaction, so don't blame her for coming on a little strongly. Like earlier, I think she gets too stimulated she ends up withdrawing and looking for a long time. Suddenly the door opens. Yuri! I'm back. Did I miss anything? Not really. Well, we have started showing up poems with each other. Eh? Already? I'm sorry for being late. No need to apologize. You still have plenty of time, so I'm glad you took all the time you needed. All right. Thanks, Monica. I suppose I should get go get my poem now. Anyway, do you want to read my poem? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound very confident for someone who claims to not be very good. Well, that's because I have some um, have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I'm always feel that way, you know. I see. Well, let's read it then. 
hole in the wall, but he wasn't looking at me, confused, I couldn't glance at my surroundings. But my burned eyes can no longer see color. Are there any others in this room? Are they talking? Or are they simply poems that flash sheets of paper? The sound of frantic, scrawling, playing tricks on my ears. The room begins to crinkle, closing in on me. The air I breathe, this place where I panic, there must be a way out. It's right there, it's right there. It's why my fears, I brandish my pen. That poem? So what do you think? That poem was pretty ass. Hmm, very free form. Okay, we got Yuri now. Let's see what... Oh, as Yuri reads the poem, I notice her eyes lighten. Exceptional. Eh? What was that? Did, it, did I say... Did I say that out loud? Yuri first covers her mouth, but then ends up covering her whole face. I... You... He's going to hate me. Um, you really didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. Eh? That's... I guess you're right. What am I going... What am I getting so nervous for? Yuri takes a breath. So, what kind of writing experience do you have? I have none. Those under the light. Last remaining sheet light to have was the test of time. Yeah. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. Calm breathing air of the present. The living in the past. The light flickens, flicker back. Phew. I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. Across the room, Monica is writing something in her notebook. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Na Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration, meanwhile Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns to the poem to the desk with one hand. Guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, oh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? The feeling of giving up. Ugh. I, I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it's it really didn't come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple of suggestions. Hmm? If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Monica liked it. And Caleb John did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but it's been a long time establishing my own writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless I come across something particularly inspiring. You see how confident Yuri is in this? It's like night and day. Which I haven't yet. Mm hmm? And Kilo Chan liked my, liked my poem too, you know? He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh. I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress a new member, Yuri. Eh? That's not what I... You... You're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Gilochan appreciates my advice more than he appreciates yours. Huh? How do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you full of yourself? I... No. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. You... Well, you know what? I wasn't the one who magically grew a size bigger as soon as Caleb John started showing up. Natsuki? Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you. Taking out your own insecurities on others like that, you really act as young as you look, Natsuki. Me? Well, who's talking? You want to be... Edgy. Edgy? Sorry, that my lifestyle was too much for someone of your mental age to comprehend. See? They're saying that proves my point. Most people learn to get over themselves after they graduate middle school, you know? If you want to prove anything, then stop harassing others with your sickening attitude. You think you can encounter balance your toxicity personality just by dressing and acting cute? The only cute thing about you is how hard you try. Whoa, be careful or you might cut yourself on that edge, Yuri. 
Oh, my bad. You already do, don't you? Did you accuse me of c myself? What the f is wrong with your head? Yeah, go on. Let Caleb Chan hear everything you really think. I'm sure he'll be head over heels for you after this. Ah! Uh, suddenly, you return towards me, as if she just noticed I was standing here. Caleb Chan, she, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. How did I get here? Yuri. Yuri. Natsuki? Yuri? Natsuki? Yuri? Natsuki? Yuri? Natsuki again? Uh, I... The sun's directly in my eyes. And so are you. What do I do here? I'm scared. Oh. Monica. Um. Hey, Caleb Chan. Yo, I'm getting blasted. You're going to see lines from the blinds, but there's nothing much I can do right now. Hey, Caleb Chan. Why don't we step outside for a little bit? Okay. Sorry about that. They really shouldn't have tried to get you involved. It's probably better for us to stay out of this. We'll go back inside once they're done yelling. Ah, ha, ha. Some president I am, right? I mean, you did used to have someone that would help calm people down, but they're not here in this world. I can't even confront my own club members properly. I just wish I was able to be a little more assertive sometimes, but I never have it in me to put my foot down against others. You understand, right? Anyway, if this makes you want to spend less time with the others, then that's fine. I'd be happy to spend time with you instead. Is this her whole agenda to spend more time with me? Suddenly, Natsuki runs out the classroom. Oh, dude, this is this is sad. She quickly runs away. Oh dear. Well, it looks like they're done. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Yuri is walk rocking back and forth in her desk while her palms are on her forehead. Yuri? I didn't mean it. I I believe you. I have no idea what Yuri might have said to Natsuki or did. Caleb Chan, please don't hate me. Please. I'm not like this. There's something wrong with me today. It's fine, Yuri. We know you didn't mean it. Besides, I'm sure Natsuki will forget all about it by tomorrow. Yeah, Monica is controlling all these people, bro. Completely. Anyway, the meeting is over, so you can go home now if you want. Yuri looks at me like she wants to say something, but she keeps glazing, glancing at Monica. Why, why can you go first, Monica? I like to stay a little bit longer. I'm the president, so I should be the last one out. Yuri's trying to say something to me. Yuri's trying to say something to me. I'll wait for you to be done. What? Well, I'm vice president, so please let me take that responsibility today. Kind of sounds like you don't want me to be around or something, Yuri. It's not that. It's not that. It's just I didn't get much of a chance to discuss my book with Caleb Chan. I would, it would just be embarrassing with you listening. Huh. I guess I don't really have a choice, do I? I'm sorry for causing trouble, but I really... Uh, I'm done. If you want more Doki Doki, subscribe. Also, they deleted everything I had, at least in this version. Let me know in the comments if me calling Sayori a friend will change things in the future. And if it does, then I'll replay the older version to get to that point for y'all. If you're new, make sure to subscribe, uh, like the video, and um, I'm out. Peace. What the